Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. Joined by my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-compatriot, Rob, on the bottom Hello. there, and joined by the Reinar stand himself in the middle there, Mr. Clay DeAngelis, playing mainly Reinar, a little bit of Katsu, but mainly back to back to uh, the, the main squeeze Reinar here, Reckless Rampage. Um, this, this deck tech is specifically for the la i guess pt and calling i don't know if you made any changes between those two lists um i'm gonna assume it's the same list for all intents yeah. and purposes unless you let me know i um, I, try, I try not to touch the cards the week before the event that would yeah you never know um and you, you piloted this into calling to a one would say pretty pretty serious contention here placing 19th out of uh yeah. 560-ish people on Reinar at X3, 10 and 3, in case anyone was wondering. 13 rounds over two days. Very difficult calling. Actually, do um, we know if this was the best Reinar in the calling? This is you the know what? The we tried. We, <laughs> yeah. we counted literally every player we knew okay. right after, and the problem is we couldn't figure out what most of them That's were. I, I know for a fact that this is the top placing Reinar. Very nice. Okay. So yeah, very nice. that's not that's now going into the title just just in case anyone needs that. <laughs> so this was the top placing round. I'm not surprised. 19th is pretty high. Yeah. You're essentially one win off top eight. <clears throat> um, and I think Reinar is quite interesting place in the middle. I think Ko is taking a lot of the brute spotlight um, recently. I mean Levi has taken a little bit of it, but um, I think Ko is mainly taking most of it. Right, obviously being the highest percentage in both the PT and the calling. At least for day one. I think day two was like tied with a bunch of other decks. But we're here to talk about Reinar. So Clay, why don't you tell me a little bit about why Reinar for your... I was going to say why Reinar for your weekend. Uh, so when the Heavy Hitters dropped, um, I was really excited about all the new cards with Reinar. Um, but I was like kind of really struggling to fit everything together in a way that like... I was satisfied with. Um, so then I started playing KO for a while, and like it was very good. Um, but there, there, I was sacrificing parts of Reiner that I'd become very like comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, things like you know when, like the kind of dedicated defensive decks. Like I like having uh, a good game plan into those decks and. Uh, my style of like maximizing blood rushes, um, it's not as significant a part of KO. It's kind of like mm -hmm. hard to put together. It's like the the play patterns with Ryan are so much more um, intuitive to me. Sure. Um, that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. And it's like um, I was I was talking to a bunch of different players, getting a bunch of different. Um, getting a lot of feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's when I landed on this list. And then it really started clicking for me, you know, in the last month or so mm -hmm. uh, before Pro Tour. Yeah. Uh, if, if anyone's looking to pick up a Brute and they're seeing, obviously, Reinar this KO, is there a strict advantage that Reinar has in this meta versus KO? Um, well, we can kind of... We, we can look at it in the like the future, uh, because one of the reasons I really wanted to play Rhino for Pro Tour was that I felt he had a better matchup in Adroma. Uh, sure. That's less of a factor now. Right. Uh, because <laughs> that's true. true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say, just from like my pure like speculation about what the metagame looks like, uh, after Dromai rotates, I feel like there's going to be kind of a race to find the deck that's best suited to killing Kato. And a lot of those are going to be defensive decks that were kept down by ah. Dromine. Um, sure. So, you know, you we call them like our the meme decks, like uh, Aklamas and Arachne, Riptide. Um, they're just there's just going to be a new type of deck. I think that's going to like um, kind of yeah. rise up in the metagame. Decks yeah, that yeah. are like blocking out like KO specific type of aggro where it's like just a lot of damage. Yeah. Right. Uh, where Reinar, I think, will like if you if you have the like KO is the top dog 
Then you have the decks over here that are hunting KO. Reinar's the deck that's the hunter, hunting hunter. decks. Hunt yeah, the hunter. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, this uh, life. <laughs> yeah. And that's not to say that we're placing Reinar in this triangle, assuming that he loses yeah. to KO. Right. Um, it's like KO has advantages in the matchup. Uh, but it takes like a really skilled pilot to uh, beat Reiner in those situations. Nice. So, fair enough. Very, fair very, enough. very reasonable meta choice when you're like confident in how to approach all the different matchups. That makes sense. I think I feel like Reiner is just like, as you said, kind of like one of those heroes that like likes to counter the counter. Like everyone's just like targeting, and you're just like chilling in the background, just lurking. <laughs> Uh, I feel like Reiner just fits it so well. Other than like uh, Ultim meta, where Reiner was like just like anti Ultim, like uh, Reiner was just targeting Ultim essentially. Mm -hmm. um, other than that particular meta, I feel like Reiner was literally like everyone targeting Lexi, and then Reiner comes out of the woodwork and you'd be like, oh, I can <laughs> shit on how you do your X, but intimidate him and just kill you, right? So I, I definitely, I definitely uh, see it that way. And then Dromai rotating out. Oh, well, not, not yet four points off, but kind of. Yeah getting there soon uh let's let's look at the deck a little bit here equipment wise i it looks pretty standard to me i don't know if there's anything clay you wanted to like highlight in your weekend that's been like like maybe happier or unhappier things you'd want to deviate i guess obviously you have like a sideboard equipment suite but uh as far as like the main stuff you're bringing in most matchups do you think how do you feel about those uh i was very uh satisfied with the equipment um when I've played Reiner in the past, I've been a really big fan of Heart and Cross Strap. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and that's like found its place in KM. Mm -hmm. um, what I've found with this deck specifically, um, Tunic just fits the cost curve like super well. Uh, because Heart and Cross Strap, uh, like I've played and cross trap decks in the past that rely a lot on three cost like chain enders for blood rush mm. sure um but this deck like i've got so many premium two costs now uh you get to have those like really optimal like you know three card blood rushes mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. um you know you pitch your blue for your for your to play blood rush you pitch the blue for your second mandible claw and then you use Tunic for the last resource you need to play a two cost. And it's like those super compact hands um, were like how I made a lot of like uh, progress mm -hmm. in these matchups. So I was totally satisfied with Tunic. I, I didn't miss Heart and Cross Trap at all. <laughs> that makes sense. Is, is it in the sideboard? Um, or is Heart and Cross nope. Trap just. Okay, he's out. Okay. Out of the deck completely. No, that's fair. Um main deck here you got i don't know if that's how you organize it do you organize like the 53 card just coming into everything because i know when we were doing mine i was just yeah. like all over the place but for yours is it like the the 50, these 53 cards are coming into every matchup and then you just side in like seven plus depending yeah. on uh, what you're going in okay so let's talk about a little bit about the main board I, i'm kind of i'm gonna skip over kind of the more obvious uh, cnc runner, 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 why why would you play like why that. would you play this card why why <laughs> would you even play blood rush like it's, it's, it's such a cheap card on ccg player but some of the some of the other cards we can kind of go over i feel like show mm -hmm. how good is show no mercy i mean the deck's called no mercy right so <laughs> yeah uh, gotta play it how now. good is show how good is show no mercy like to me it looks obviously looks good on paper but i, I don't play Reiner a lot how well did this do for you in the on the weekend i did a lot of damage to michael jasker with this card <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um so just playing it like just pitching a blue to play this it's like pretty underwhelming uh sure. where this guy really shines is off the back of a blood rush turn mm -hmm. where this looks a lot more like a three cost nine damage attack or whenever you have an agility token mm. uh and you get to like um uh, like end end a combat chain with it uh so let's see this card is good uh it is not like amazing I've made, like, there's some deviations in how I made this deck compared to, let's say, even say the deck Pablo brought to Pro Tour, because Pablo is also on Reinhardt. He played a lot more barrage and beatdowns. I only played blues. 
Okay. This card is a like very synergistic with Barrage and Beatdowns. Right. And it was like uh, something like round 11 on the coverage. He just robbed Alan Lau with like Barrage and Beatdown, Barrage and Beatdown, Shadow Mercy. <laughs> Yep. Like that that's a, that's a really powerful uh, combo that this this deck don't have access to. Right. Um, mm. But this is like kind of the disruption for decks that want to block me out. Yeah. Um, like whenever you have a jelly token or blood rush, it just like it adds another like option to the wheel of things that they have to respect at the end of a blood rush turn. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, especially if you're drawing things like Pack Hunt. You can, like, yeah. place a Claw right. or Pack Hunt, get extra Intimidates off of that. It doesn't have to be beat down, right? You do have other Intimidate sources. If it, Reinar itself is an Intimidate source, yep. right? Yeah, Blood, so Blood Rush into that. Awesome. You can discard, like, discard Wind Up and stuff like that, I imagine, to, uh, you know, push, push a little bit more of that, that ability. Yeah, that, that's another really... Yellow intro. Wind Ups? We, we, let's bring up the Yellow Wind Ups, because yeah. oh, obviously sure, no. KO. Yeah, K yeah. KO, obviously, it's most decks were on blue, blue-yellow. Right, blue because it was a six, effectively. But right. Reiner obviously doesn't get that uh, privilege. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's different hero ability here. So uh, three yellow wind ups. How, how do you like it? Do you, do you think? Uh, I also have three reds in the board. Okay. Okay. So that that's that's fair. How, okay. So how about why are the yellows in the main, and then why are the reds in the board, and how well did it do essentially? Because I'm kind of curious. Uh, I love the wind ups. I yeah. it realistically the yellow one should also be in the board. Mm. But I find it such a versatile card, it's kind of hard to get away from. Yep. Um, because, like, if we look at Reinar's weaknesses as a hero, it's like he struggles to play big hands. And you, like, the way you offset that is by playing, like, Barrage and Beatdowns mm -hmm. or, you know, some, certain non attacks with Go Again. The uh, sure. problem is that only solves the issue for one turn. If you're playing against an opponent who's committed to blocking you out over and over, Reinar eventually runs into hands where um, he just, like, he can't convert his hand. He just mm -hmm. has to, like, swim with two cards. Sure. Uh, Agile Windup kind of does a better job for that because it lets you um, play two big hands back-to-back. -back. So what you do is you discard Agile Windup, which creates your agility token, but it also turns on mandible claws and also intimidates. Uh, now, mm -hmm. since Ryder gets to play two mandible claws, like you turn on both of those to attack for six, and then you know if your resources line up really well, like let's say you have two blues, your wind up and a pack hunt, um, you get to go claw claw pack hunt, and you play like four cards for twelve damage, which isn't thrilling right now. But you also have the agility token set up for next turn. It's like this is like a really key piece of puzzle of how I pressure defensive decks. Yeah. Um, I also like to say a lot that this lets me turn my tunic into an agility token because, like, a really common thing I'll do with this is discard it and then pitch a blue to swing one claw and then use my tunic counter to swing my second claw. Mm. Sure. That makes sense. Just being as efficient as you can with two resources. Kind of like yeah. A, a yeah. It's like root mantra, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I love how much more it does than just create the agility token. It turns on your claws, and it also intimidates the Reinar site. Yeah, Jack, Jack yeah, it, of all It does trades. a lot of stuff for you. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really powerful card. Uh, against Kano, it's really funny, because what like Kano's trying to kill you on your turn, uh, if you hold this card up while they're trying to combo off, and they activate Ragamuffins. You respond to the Ragamuffins activation by oh, playing Agile Wind Up. Oh, that's really that's funny. funny. And they have to like they intimidate the last card. The Ragamuffins just becomes an op. That's really cool. I love how I love how it's an intimidate on demand. Actually, it's it's really really nice. Yeah, the, yeah. this card is so cool. I it's it pro, like I would say this is the defining card of the deck, mm. but it's not as cool a name as No Mercy. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. That's <laughs> Agile Wind Up dot deck. What about the so the red one? I guess we could talk about this when we talk about sideboard. Yeah. We'll kind of finish off the main board first. Um, yeah, what else? We I don't got? really see. I think the yellow, the rest of the yellows and the reds kind of speak for themselves here. I would actually the say um, run runners that might actually be a bit mm -hmm. contentious. Mm -hmm, right. Oh yeah. Uh, because this deck doesn't have a lot of agility generation in it. Mm -hmm. um, sure. So the reason I play this is because 
it does a bunch of things like pretty well. Like, so, you know, against when, when I have the rare situations where I have the agility token, that's great. Mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. it's a two cost brute card for blood rushes, but also it's a two cost card for pummel. And it's ah. like being able to check all of these boxes right. and kind of bring up the ratios of all these effects that I already want. Right. Um, yeah. Makes it kind of like not obvious the role that it fills, but mm -hmm. it's just like it's sure. just good for everything. It's a very good card stat wise. Plus, it has the benefit yeah. of six, giving three. you the uh, the go again if you have an agility token. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I kind of like on the other on the KO deck tech. I think I, what I said was essentially the floor of this card's all, already really good, and the ceiling's yeah. insane. And that yeah. kind of fits the same thing as Reinar because you know if you have agility, it's crazy, and if you have pummel, it's crazy. But even it's just a two for six three, and you have an arm piece that gives you a might off of it, like it's still yeah. really really good. Uh, so I definitely get it. Yeah. Um, uh, what um, what role does Dig Up Dinner play? I I, I saw you hover. <laughs> I, I yeah. And you I'm know what? Curious about this card, yeah. I, I like the art, so I'll ask about it too. <laughs> I I love this card. Um, so one of the like paradigm shifts I made of the stack is that I wanted the average blue quality to be higher. It's like um, there's some random draws. Uh, like with Blood Rush, I'm trying, like, I really want to play three card Blood Rushes, so I'll often have like an extra card left over. Mm -hmm. And I want as many of my blues to be things that are like pretty good in Arsenal. Sure. Uh, so Dig Up Dinner specifically is probably the best of these blues um okay. so firstly if, if you look at the cost curve most of these are two cost attacks so when this card is stranded in my hand because my opponent didn't give me enough to attack into them or it's like a random draw off of savage feast that just goes like slaps right into arsenal uh yeah. it um it pairs well with my two cost attack uh the other part of this deck is that it is it's got a really high six power attack density, mm -hmm. uh, more than most Reinhardt decks. So this core of the deck is 36 powers just right there. And then with the seven extra slots, you can board up to 37. Okay. So a lot of this, targets. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of targets. Um, a lot of the time, this is, it has, um, all three of its kind of functions are very desirable. It gains me life, which is great. It shuffles six power attacks back into my deck, which is excellent for like the draw my match, put in a lot more poppers. Uh, it's great for Kasai when she's trying to grind me out. Mm. Um, it, it's just like it's a lot of fatigue resilience. Yeah. The other thing is that it shuffles the deck. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Because one of the historical problems with Reinar is that. Um, you're trying to make your blood rushes as good as possible. And you're trying to like really preserve them. Like a blood rush stuck on the bottom of your deck can lose you a lot of matchups because it just takes too long to get back to it. Um, but sometimes you just have to pitch it because the other alternative is that you just have to like IP yourself. Yeah. Uh, dig up dinner. So like um, in the past, when I needed a shuffle effect, I would have to play like Sand Sketch Plan. And that is a very conditional card. Right. Um, and most of the time, it's not efficient. Dig sure. Dinner is a shuffle effect that usually gets me, like, two life, which is, like, fine for blue with go again, uh, and shuffles my deck. And it's like, it, it just does everything that I want for blue. I wish I had, like, mm -hmm. 18 of these. Yeah. Yeah, you caught Fair me enough. off guard with the shuffling your deck as like a good thing. I was like, but if you're like pitch stacking and stuff, typically you don't want to do that. But I, oh. I mean, I've been in games when I had to pitch my blood Play. rush, and I was like, all right, it's gonna be gone for <laughs> forever until I see it again. Yeah, this yeah. deck doesn't pitch stack at all. Yeah, um, okay. the pitch because stack. like there, there are no beat downs to <laughs> right. pitch. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was that was you a cool there. Yeah. Yeah, I got blue beat downs, but it's like cutting those is really weird. Mm -hmm. True. I guess like. You're only like super weak blue in Arsenal's Wrecker off, which I assume you're just not gonna Arsenal Wrecker off. But yeah, <laughs> other, than, other than that, every, other than that, it looks like pretty reasonable. T tell, talk to me a little bit about talk a big game. Because um, I, I read yeah. the first time I read this card is when I got the extended art, 
<laughs> on one of the package or whatever. And then I like forgot this was a card. And then I forgot it was a brute card. I thought it was like a generic. And then I had to be like, oh, it's a brute guardian card. Uh, talk, talk to me about why this card's in your deck as a three of. Sure. Um, so, you know, part of our... Um, the, the other thing I, um, about the blue base that was important is I wanted all of them to be non-attacks because okay. I know Bolton was something that would be something I'd have to respect. Yeah. Uh, yep. At the tournament, uh, is there is always out there. Um, so, talk about game is like it's a non attack with go again that costs zero. So, it kind of fills that role of getting out of the way of Blood Rush hands. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. also, when I have like the super compact Blood Rush hands where I just have an extra card I can't spend, playing this and naming five is terrifying for your opponent. Because you got a Mandible Claw for 5, a Mandible Claw for 5, and then another attack for 8. And um, they have, like... Like, if, if they... They don't have to give you a card on every single attack to break up a talk a big game for 5. Right. Right. Um, just, or, just or, that, or they have armor. Turn. Yeah, well, yeah. This yeah. turn? That's that's great. Holy moly. That's actually really good on yeah, Blood yeah. Rush. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the 5 right. the is right. a very good point. Very good break point. Yeah, if, yeah, because then because usually they usually end up like taking a claw or at least one claw yep. if not both, yeah. right? So this okay, so this is nice like a it, it kind a of soft adds, on hit. It, yeah, exactly. It adds a very good on hit to cards that you normally wouldn't care about as much if you're an aggressive deck. It's like okay, just hit me with claw, no big deal. But five mites, that's that's a okay. lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, this didn't really come up. Like I, I never pound myself in situations where playing this is actually good. <laughs> um. <laughs> But it's like, as a card that you just randomly draw and have to arsenal. Yeah. So like, it is. It's not bad. Right. Um, yeah. Like playing a savage feast, naming three with this, it yeah. like demands a lot of interaction from them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I also, I wasn't disappointed. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. You also kind of bluff pummels too. <laughs> if you name a number like bigger than the attack value, <laughs> yeah, that'd true. be really funny. I'm gonna name seven. Here's a six attack. Like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that would make sense for your deck. It'd be pretty funny. Hundred, hundred percent. I would and make them block you. <laughs> I say, na I think naming more than three is pretty optimistic if you got the puff. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You never, you never know. Just like call them on their BM and be like, "All right, here's Pummel." Yeah. And just, just rake it in. Just talk a big game. It's cool. All right. Yeah, it's a cool card. So. I think the last one is talk to me a bit about Warmonger's Diplomacy. Mm -hmm. So Warmonger's Diplomacy, um, for anyone who wasn't around in the last six to nine months, was a bit of a menace when it came out because people realized how powerful this card was against things like Runeblade, the yeah, decks Zalia. like Azalea. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, at the moment, Runeblade not being the biggest of threats, especially when Briar kind of LL'd. Uh, specifically it being like one of the main targets here but then obviously Zayla is still still chilling around here but is there a reason why you got you got three of these still in here is it um are you just like is it specifically for like azalea or is it just one of those like blue block three non-attacks that just fits the curve uh i mean both of those are true um one of like the advantages the runner has over say ko is that you get to run these like silver bullet effects in your deck um, it's like I didn't run into any Azaleas, but this mm. card alone kind of like flips that matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it's just, um, it it's just a cyborg type yeah. that doesn't really yeah. hurt what the deck's trying to do. Like, yeah. That's, that's, that makes sense. Um, let's talk a little bit about the sideboard here because I think that's, that's the main, uh, yeah, that's, that's that's the main spice level here. We've got we've got a whole bunch of cards. Um, <laughs> so we, we kind of we, yeah. we kind of mentioned the wind ups. I think we probably I, I want to kind of finish that loop here because we got the three red wind ups in the inventory sideboard mm -hmm. inventory, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it here. W what's the because uh, you, you have like ones of two three like you've got kind of all three cycles. You don't really have a one that stands out particularly. So why why three wind ups? What what is it? What is it for? What is it here for? Uh, two functions. Uh, sure. the first function is when I'm against defensive decks that I expect will block me out and wait for me to brick. Um, you know, it does the same thing yellow wind up does. 
Sure. Um, yeah. The other thing, so because of that, so it's like great in a drum. I like that's one of the best plans drum I has into Ryan R. Sure. Uh, is to just like block me out. Uh, the other thing is that it has seven power, which is like really pesky for prism. Right. Mm. Uh, triumph. Be- triumph. Sorry. Yeah. Triumph. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see any prisms, but it's like there's some gamblers gloves in there. Like I, I didn't want to be caught totally unprepared for that matchup because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it's really easy for things to go wrong in that matchup. Right. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, totally understand that. Hundred percent. Okay. Um, that that definitely makes sense. It's like kind of more of a good thing with the with the yellow windups. You can yeah. have the red windups in there. Very very useful. Um, let's talk a little bit about the i want to talk about the d react suite here so or let's call it defensive suite because i know oasis right. is like not oasis a sensitive too. d-react yeah so you got one fate three sync two oasis um i don't know how you want to break it down but what what's kind of the purpose of that breakout the one two three and where where are those where are you want to bring where uh which matchups do you want to bring those into sure uh so the respites are just for kano just um, kano huh yeah I was playing a lot against Augustine, one of our locals, um, yep. great Kano player. Uh, he was beating me like quite bad uh, for like a while, and then I found like this agile windup interaction, and that helped quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still wasn't making me comfortable. So Oasis was like, um, it just makes sure that I Kano doesn't like punk me out because there were a lot of Kanos. There were a lot of they're like a thirty oh, yeah. or something in the calling, which thirty is like, in the calling, yeah, thirty in the calling. It's kind of wild. The most mostly. we've ever seen KOs. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah Kano's hundred percent. The most Kano's we ever saw. So it definitely makes sense. And you're on tunic anyways, so yeah, you know, not um, that hard to play them. Two of the two of them feels right because like I like you don't really need to see three of them to beat Kano. Mm-hmm. You just need one in Arsenal and for them to like assume you don't have it, but secretly yeah. you do. Um, of course. And just like with, with AB3, it's just like it's so. It can't also be so good to beat you through that, man. It's like. Yep. They have to respond to everything. They have to like combo you multiple times in the yeah, right order true. against the right stuff. It's pretty. That was pretty obnoxious, but you know. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, and what about the fate, though? Fate and the three sinks? Um. This is just like really old tech. Like the, this was a discussion I had with Ian like two years ago. Mm, uh, sure. He figured like just the three sinks wasn't quite good enough to like um, cover the decks that ask you to have D reacts. Mm. Like if you want to have a D react, like every other hand, something like that. It's like sure. Yeah, it just it feels more comfortable. Like I. Okay. Are we talking about like uh, Dory, Azuri? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Decks? So, yeah. Um, Dorinthia, uh, which is like a lot peskier now that they have great acts. So it's like some oh, yeah. you don't know what they're submitting it to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, Azuri, um, Bravo. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. Rubber D okay. are good. <laughs> yeah. Probably Azalea, too, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Either, either for Azalea. Fair enough. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save the pummels for last. We're gonna we're gonna keep save going. Here. So I got a lot to say about pummel. Let, let's let's talk about the attack actions here. So you have it al- you have two alpha rampage. You have three skull crack. Um, what 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 why? I guess just just why? <laughs> what where when who? <laughs> what where and why? But specifically the why. So the skull cracks are just there for pummel. They're basically the pummel targets. Ooh. Yeah, the least desirable two cost to have access to that I want in the deck. So okay. they just sit there and wait for Pummel to come in. Uh, alternatively, they can be extra poppers when I don't want to run pop, uh, Pummel, but it's like, whatever. Um, Alpha Rampage, it's like, uh, it's a card I never fully cut from my deck. Right. It's just like, gives like reach in the end game. Yeah, like it truly. Um, great in the end game, it's great on turn one. Um, and it like it's kind of like a soft solution for hand compression issues. Like, sure. you know, if you've got three blues and alpha rampage, like that thing still attacks for nine, which is like better than 
a lot of hands Reiner gets to play in those like big hand yeah. situations. Yeah, that makes sense. Which uh, which heroes do you bring it in for? Uh, the heroes I don't bring it in for. <laughs> Okay, are... so it's like a pretty mainstay, I guess. Yeah, it, it's like if I'm playing Pummel, I don't play Alpha Rampage. Sure, two different purposes. Yeah, it's like they they just both are like cats and dogs. They just uh -huh. interact really poorly with each other. Right. Yeah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Did you have? Did you consider uh, what is that card called? Savage Beatdown, or is that card even like reliable in Reiner? I don't even know. Yeah, the just doubles like, or stuff I've twelve seen. attack, I think. I yeah. love Savage Beatdown. It's <laughs> not in the deck, so you don't love it that much. So, Savage Beatdown, I think, was at its peak when Old Town was yeah. like the number one threat in the metagame. Uh, sure. Because what it lets you do is like just the way Blood Rush interacts with the hand sizes you get to play, it's really mm. hard to convert like a five card hand. Unless you have Savage Beatdown. Um, to that end, that's another reason I really liked Heart and Cross Strap because it, like, the actual requirements to play Savage Beatdown, like, really hard. And Savage Beatdown just, like, mm. or uh, Heart and Cross Strap bails you out of those situations. Right. Right. Nowadays, um, decks are, like, asking you to block so much. Like oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you, there's never a situation where you're stuck with a five card hand, wondering like, how do I convert this fifth card? It's like, um, yep. yeah, you can just block, and it's right. not like decks are so defensively powerful that you need the savage beatdown to go over the top. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Crown of Seeds was a hell of a deck. Yeah. Um, so we have the Arc Smash. You got the one. I imagine it's for dash. Maybe there's some something else I'm missing here. Is that just like it's a little dash, a little uh, uh, adventure extraordinaire uh, respect, or well, what's, what's uh, also Max? Uh, the also Nitro Max, Mechanoid yeah. is an item. That's true. Um, basically, my philosophy with Arc Smash is like if running one of them closes the door on certain matchups, mm. then it's. Mm -hmm. It's just it's low opportunity cost to right. do it. Like, uh, I ran into two uh, dash IEs, uh, and like I never had the arc smash, but I was happy that it was in the deck because it gave me, um, yeah, it, it it opened up new paths to victory that I wouldn't have otherwise. Right. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Um, remembrance. Mm. You got one remembrance in here. Why is that in here? Uh, so going back to decks that like to block me out, <laughs> the um, yeah, Dromai, uh, Kasai, Victor, um, the blockout plan typically only works when one of my blood rushes breaks. If mm. all my blood rush is coming for 18 plus damage, it's off the table. Mm. Um, so what they can do is they can play like a normal game of flesh and blood and then once they see one of my blood rushes brick they're able to just like throw up the defenses mm -hmm. and keep me out for the rest of the game right remembrance is the antidote to that it like it lets me brick a blood rush and still uh like get through their blocks on like the last or second last turn of the game okay yeah. What are right. some of the common targets that you'd pick with this? I would so like my special is Blood Rush Bellow, Pack Hunt, Wrecker Rom. Okay. Uh red, yellow, and a blue. And <laughs> all <laughs> the, the all the ingredients you need for a blood rush. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So you're cool. you're kinda like setting up your uh your those eighteen pluses to be as uh, effective as possible here. Yeah. Getting cards back in the deck. Okay. That's 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 a pretty good point, just to make sure, because uh, you know, blood, blood, blood rush is missing is a bane of all brutes, it seems. But for Ryder specifically, he doesn't have as much recourse as Levi and Ko do outside of the blood rush, so it kind of does yeah. make sense uh, to be able to at least keep that win con in there. Um, okay, then, I mean, the AB is the AB. I kind of understand that. Gambler's gloves. You don't like what? What, what do you not? What do you not want Apex in? I guess is the question. Is Literally the just for him. Okay. And this that, that makes so you just you got you got killed arc light you know you, just, you, you gotta, can't risk you can't risk rolling a one on scabs. 
Yeah, it's like the Arc Smash. It's like it's a one card investment until I close the door on the matchup. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Gamblers for that. Um, okay, we. I mean, we have pommel. Let's let's talk oh, about yeah, let's okay. talk about these two red pommels. <laughs> yeah. Um There's two of them, and they're red. That's really all I know about them in this particular deck. So why don't you uh, lighten us? Um, let's uh, let's start with why I did like pommel. Um, <laughs> okay. I have not liked pommel in the past. And have been rather like a vocal opponent of Pummel because every part of it hurts Blood Rush turns. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a six power attack. It blocks two. It pitches for one. Uh, you know, even a yellow pitching for two is not very good. Um, like you almost never want to start Blood Rush with a yellow. Um, now, this deck has gotten so consistent. There's like we have 23 blues, um, like a minimum of 36 power attacks, usually like 34. Uh, the number of times my blood rushes brick is down so low that we can have, uh, like we, we've got like a, a brick budget now. Okay. You got a brick budget, I like nice. it. Yeah. Uh, and pummel to me seems like a way for Reinar to distinguish himself from KO. Hmm. Uh, it's like a way for him to attack aggro decks and, you know, take advantage of Tunic. Sure. Um, and it's got a lot of surprise factor. Uh, I bet. Pummel is pretty unfashionable in Rhino these days, so the number of people who would just, like, I play a six power attack and it's like, yep, take six. And it was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, it's not over yet. <laughs> we got a reaction step. <laughs> uh, so so heart, it's like, it just drops <laughs> when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, like against Levia, you just like take her down past 13. Yeah. Um, against like any of the aggro decks, um, like your CNC pommel is as good as anybody's yeah. Oh, yeah. uh and yeah there are a lot of two costs so uh, for this deck specifically so it's almost always ready to go whenever you you know draw blue and it's like power attack and have your tunic up i guess yeah the two, two. yeah that's fair uh, are there as far as like okay so you kind of mentioned some of the matchups you played in already kind of just yeah right there but is, is there is there decks where you just like don't like you really don't want pummel uh, any deck that I expect them to bring in D-Reacts for me, I never want to run this into a D-React. Yeah. Okay, so like what? You got like Assassin maybe? Yeah, like, yeah, so, so... Guardian, maybe? Yeah, Guardian, Assassin, Drill My, um... Yeah. Maybe Warrior, I guess? Like a mid-range? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't play this warrior. into Warrior either. Um, I also play this into Wizard. Um, mm. because sure. they will block... Like, well, when they're committed to blocking, it's usually because they want to establish something. Right. <laughs> and Pummel, like, maybe they can pitch it into Kano, but it's like, what, you, they turn it into an Aether Dart? It's like, mm, yes, no, if you're, if you're taking the potion out of their hand, like, right. that's brutal. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, now, now you can just, you can CNC Pummel if they want to respond to Ragamuffin and discard Wind Up, and you just <laughs> force the combo, then you shut down the combo. It's perfect. The one two yeah. pump. Oh, man, you really, you really dislike Kano. If you I got, know, there's, you there's so much counter to Kano going on. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's not a secret anymore. That's just the Kano conundrum. It's like it's Kano's really only good when it's a secret. Yeah. Like, really good when it's a secret. But yeah. uh okay, that's fair. Did how did how did Pummel go for you on the weekend? Did you were you like surprised were you pleasantly surprised? Were you not that impressed? Were you the, the It was really very good into KO. Very yes. good into KO, because KO doesn't want to block you, is that the idea? Or yeah. block specific or when, yeah. Yeah, when they're blocking it's like they're trying to play like really efficient hands. Right. So it's like, oh, I'm going to block six uh, uh, Bear Fangs you. And it's like, yeah. well, how about you just swing Mandible Claw this turn? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Um, so it... Also, it really um, it serves my end game for KO really well, where mm -hmm. um, KO kind of gets ahead just through the like play of the game uh with like the plus one damage effects and yeah. cast bombs sure. and whatever and uh, pummel is just like 
it kind of pairs well with the intimidate effects for just like kind of sucker punch reach mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the game. Um, oh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think I think it's quite interesting. Uh, I think that I kind of agree with you that Pummel seems a little bit more uh, necessary now, at least in the, in the scope of the deck is just very efficient. And there's really yeah. not, not as much reason not to run it, I guess, is what I, what I mean. That's definitely what I agree with. Was whereas before I do remember the Reinhardt decks of like you know, six plus months ago, nine, twelve feet a year right. ago, running Pummel on like uh, I saw some of the like the, the club builds running Pummel, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing, man? Like what? <laughs> what like what's your win con here? Yeah, You're just yeah. like meandering about. That's not the Reiner that I enjoyed watching, anyways. Oh, it definitely turned me off the deck when I saw that. I saw like club Pummel, and I'm like, what does this actually do? <laughs> You're just like. Anyways, but it, it, it like a claw deck when you have like a bunch of two for sixes, and, and you just we're just ending, we're just gonna get more, especially even with like the new um, the KO structure deck or whatever the KO CC yeah. deck. Probably gonna get some more juice for that. I think I saw like a two for six that like kills Arsenal on hit or some crap like that. Mm -hmm. A good puzzle target. I don't think that card's real. It looks like that one. Can was you imagine if it was me. though? If that was real, that'd be gone. Like I'd be. Uh, it'd be. <laughs> I'd be, it'd be like. Oh man, yeah, it's it's it seems it seems insanely insane to put it that way. It's like set, you said packing. No, 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 no. How about this one? Yeah, <laughs> they said that packing. Um, that's that's fair. But like, there's already like a nice base of that, and like it allows you to like bring in some if you want to bring in like humble or like generic two for sixes yep. for like specific tech. It's, it's very flexible. So I, I definitely do kind of. I, I am a guardian player, of course. I like Pummel. but like very specifically in the meta, I do uh, I do appreciate a good a good. A good logical pummel, you know, like a nice, a nice logic-driven pummel here. Um, so I want to go through. Uh, not, I'm not going to go through every single matchup. Obviously, you played. Uh, we played 13 rounds, and you played another four CC games in the Pro Tour, right? So you played a lot of CC mm -hmm. over the weekend. So, yep. um, and you do. And anyone watching, Clay did day two. Uh, I, I remember this. He did day two, but he wanted to give everyone a 10-3 KO deck. Uh, sorry, a 10-3 Reiner deck to review here. So. <laughs> Uh, Clay decided to uh, drop play the call and do really well. So we want to talk about a little bit about the matchups. Uh, I think we'll we'll probably avoid Droma. I, I think it's yeah. we're a little late. We're a little late in the game. I, I think, think I so. went through it on the KO, and I'm just like, why yeah. am I doing this? We, we like, could talk just, about we, how Droma leaving would change this deck, maybe at the end. That's 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 different. Yeah, that's that's yeah, kind of different. But yeah, not a really matchup. Uh, yeah, we did. We could kind of allude for it too. But let's let's talk about some of the matchups like going forward in you know, like the PQ season. So matchups that like you're probably going to see a lot of. So maybe. We'll start with KO. I think that's probably the one that a lot of people are very curious about. So what's what's your kind of sideboard plan and overall plan into KO? We have seven cards uh, to play with, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the Pummel and the Skullcrack, those are five of them. And then I'll usually put in two St. Belows. Makes sense. Um, just to keep them honest with Pulpings. Yeah, Pulpings is, a, that's is, true. is crazy. Yeah. What, like, what I, your... I find... I find with pulping, um, sitting on a D react forever could like get you into a lot of trouble, um, because like you know, a smart KO will just not rip the pulping whenever like your D react will time walk them. Mm. But every now and then they're put into situations where they kind of have to like yeah right, and just having the sink below to like change like just representing sink below and changing how they. Um, you know, assess their turns, it's like, that's just good enough. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. And I assume you want to go second in the matchup, correct? Me yeah, wrong. yeah. They, like, they could cast one to turn one, but it's like, uh, uh, um, this deck is a lot sense. worse at forcing through, like, turn one damage. Right. Um, be dumb. Especially with like, yeah. the alpha rampages, which don't come in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just I just want to play kind of chaos game of just like presenting a lot of damage. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, talk a little about Dory here. Now Dory's a little bit funny. Again, you kind of mentioned that you don't really know what they're on, and in the Calling Pro Tour, there were like three different Dory decks running around. There was Dawnblade, there was Hatchets, uh, there was Great Axe. Great Axe. I think I, I saw I saw all of them. In the, I didn't personally see them, but I saw in the top tables a lot of different Dorys in the top tables in the Calling specifically. Two of them making PT, obviously. Um, how do you kind of approach that matchup? Is there kind of like any assumptions? Assuming no scouting or anything like that, what's your kind of overall game plan? So before that weekend, I didn't really know that hatchets were a thing. The new hotness. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so my sideboard is primarily to cover Dawnblade and Decimated Great Axe. Okay. Uh, um, so the four D reacts come in. They're not great against Decimated Great Axe, but um, the Remembrance, the Agile Windups, um, really uh, offset that. Also, Dig Up Dinner is like really good into Decimated Great Axe because like they're you know kind of mulching your deck, um, asking you to block these attacks over and over again. Uh, so it, it gives you a lot more staying power. It's like it lets you resolve another blood rush, basically, between the Remembrance and the Dig Up Dinners. Um, yeah. I sense. only played one Dory on the weekend. It was OO, I think, Taiwan? Like 10th yeah, on the EO leaderboard. Yeah. Um, he got me in a really close game uh, because, mm -hmm. like, just not enough stuff on my way. Like, I bricked two Blood Rushes. Okay. Uh, against him, but I think the game plan is like pretty sound against Great Axe. Sure. Um, if I was against Hatchets, I I don't know, like my deck blocks well. I would hope that is good enough for the most part, and that I could rip giant blood rushes that are like hard for them to block out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's it's something just... I need to figure out for next season. Yeah, season season is upon us here, so. That makes sense. Is there anything else that was like super? Cr I mean, Victor. I think Victor right. was there. Um, yep. This I, I am fairly this well seems pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I think like Reiner in general kind of likes Guardian, and I don't yeah. think Victor has as much staying power as Bravo because there's no Dominate, right. so there's like less, less, and you you this deck clashes pretty decently. Like I don't. Yeah, um, yeah, then you don't get free trounces. Yeah. Okay. So what what's your what's your kind of idea into Victor? Uh, so it's the red windups, the alpha rampage, sure, which is uh, remembrance and like a skull crack to round it up to seven. Um, okay. nice, yeah. Basically, if you're not gonna dominate attacks into me, I just get to make my deck like extremely consistent, right? No D reacts needed, yeah. That's quite, that's quite nice. Um, I I can't think of anything else specifically. Maybe there was like one or two decks that um, you either saw a bunch of on the weekend or like a matchup you think is going to be more important going forward or something like that. Maybe just like one or two. I saw a lot of Bolton, actually. Hmm. Bolton? Uh, oh, I just thought of one. But yeah, do Bolton first. Yeah. Um, so there's like Temptation. Since they're like an aggro deck, there's Temptation to play the Pummels into them. Um sure. The D reacts are so much better. The the fate sinks all all yeah. the all the D reacts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll I'll play those to like cover the snatch effects, and yeah. then it would be like agile mm. wind up to round it up. So it's just like I don't have to block because like that that's one of the ways that Bolton kind of feasts on decks is like mm. when they have to block to convert their hand. Right. Right. And the red windups mean like I can just ship no blocks and attack for like similar amounts of damage. Makes sense. Um, the one that I had in mind was Katsu because I saw a shit ton of Katsu. I don't know, and, and right. it's a very good deck, and I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, did you see any Katsus, and what's your kind of idea into Katsu? I saw zero Katsu. Were you happy about that? Yes, I. Was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet. I bet. I played a lot of Katsu, so I know what that deck feels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you do you have a plan into Katsu, or is it just kind of dodge and pray, bob and weave? Um, if I were to run into a Katsu, I would be running the D reacts, and it does not feel very good. But I'd probably have to run the pummels too. Like mm. okay. Um, but that's a pretty unstable list that I'm submitting, but it's like they're threatening me on too, too many different angles. Fair. Okay. And the name of the game is just block correctly, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, window with blood rush or something along those lines, I yeah. imagine. Like CNC pummel. Yeah. 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 C CNC pummel is like really hard to lose the game from that position. It's just like surviving long enough to resolve that. Right. Similar to like the Guardian plan into Katsu. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. it's just like block correctly, find a window, and pray. I pray they can't combo you out. Uh, uh, that kind of makes sense. Okay. 
Uh, I think that's like a, a nice round of match. I'm going to go through every single matchup, but that's a nice kind of roundup of matchup. If you do have questions about any of the other matchups, you can leave a comment in the video, and if Clay decides he yeah. wants to uh, comment, reply to that, he'll comment, he, he, he'll do so. I, um, I did want to ask what the draw my uh, just change up to the deck. Like, do you have any plans uh, post, at post this draw point? My, or once she, yeah, exactly, once she's out, uh, I see. Inevitably me. LLs. Yeah, like, you know what was going to change about the deck? Um... I'm not sure the deck changes um, okay. because, like, everything that I'd bring in for Dromai is just apply like. apply to other yeah, games as well. It's all pretty broadly applicable. Yeah, poppers cool. and such. Yeah, Normal. Poppers, Remembrance. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I think, I think like, post Dromai, it's like a lot of decks just brought in extra poppers and stuff like that, get more slots. But I think for exactly. like Rhyme or Guardian yeah. and stuff like that, can't imagine there's too much it's to just change. It's part of the kit. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, any any kind of immediate ideas on, on uh, oh, sorry. This is what I actually want to say. Overperformer, underperformer of the deck on the deck. Overperformer. One, card, one um, card each. One card or equipment or whatever. Uh, overperformer, then underperformer on the deck. Sure. Uh, overperformer has to be Agile Wind Up. Would, mm. Yellows or reds or both? Just uh, yeah, they were always good. Okay. Um, yeah. Why? Uh, it like it it offsets Runner's biggest weakness. Um, <laughs> Big F U to Kano. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I guess what what they really did is they allowed me to cut Barrage and beat down from the deck. Right. Um, which is like such a nice boon for the consistency. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you get the six power as well with that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I was very happy with the Agile windups. Uh, nice. Underperformer, underperformer. It's probably Bonebreaker Bellow. Um, Bonebreaker Bellow. I'm... Broker Bro. Oh, I forgot. The I card forgot that. Yeah, I was about to look for it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I know what that card does. I swear. Chess, yeah. Okay. Why well, was I'm this not reading this for the first time? I promise. So. <laughs> That card was in there in the situations where it's like the end of the game and I'm looking at four blues and it's like mm -hmm. one's a Bonebreaker Bell and one's like a Blue Wrecker Roll. And then it would let me attack for nine damage, okay. go again in the end game. That just never happened. It was just not. It, it was, it was, it was a it's the game. worst of my blue days yeah. and I'd love to find some replacement for it. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah um, probably could probably might be able to find some in the new KO deck, but that's fair. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I think so. Okay. Um, any any kind of final thoughts? We're running up to about an hour here. Any, any kind of final thoughts about the deck? Maybe um, a lot of, a lot of players probably newer to Brute in general or Reiner. Any any tips tips and tricks or something mm. that you'd like to say? Someone just picking up this deck who wants to bring it to ProQuest, like practice for ProQuest, something like that. Uh, and anything yeah. You want to say there? So. There are a lot of times where you feel the need to roll Skatskin Leathers. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have like kind of a new decision model that I try to use whenever I activate the card. Sure. And basically what I'm doing, and I'm trying to make this as like... <laughs> easy to consider. Uh, under, uh, as easy to understand yeah. as possible. Sure. But I'm like comparing... I'm comparing how much I IP myself. It's like, if I roll a one, how much do I IP myself? Like, how many less cards am I drawing at the end of my turn? Right. If that makes sense. Right. And then, if I hit the four plus, how much of an IP am I offsetting? Mm. So let's say that I'm looking okay. at a four card hand, and I've got no agility token or anything. Um, if I roll a one on scabs, I IP three myself, because I just arsenal one of the cards in my hand. Right. If I hit on scabs, I'm offsetting uh, an IP one. Right. Sure. Uh, because, like, uh, if I don't roll at all, I would just play my attack, arsenal card, and one card is run. So that's like an IP one. And sure. if I hit on the scabs, then I don't have to... Like, I'm drawing four cards at the end of the turn. So basically... Mm -hmm. I am I, one in six times. I will IP three myself, and then uh, three out of six times, or half the time, 
I am offset in IP1. Right. And my formula for that is that whenever the risk is three times greater than the reward, mm -hmm. I it's it's effectively balanced. It's the same whether you decide to roll or don't. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in that case, I'm trying to offset an IP one, or I'm trying to offset an IP three, and I'm uh, my reward is offsetting an IP one. Right. It's perfectly balanced. It's like it's, you do it if it's good. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, so the times where this is relevant um, are times where you're like looking at a hand with like a blue and a two cost attack, and you have tunic up. Uh, that's like one of the better situations mm -hmm. to roll scabs because if you hit, then you get to play your two costs and then you tune it for a claw swing. And your risk is very small, the deck. Uh, and it's like your risk assessment is a lot more important now that you don't have gambler's gloves to cover for you. True. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you know, um, yeah. You just want to make sure that you're not risking too much. Yeah. Uh, sure. And I'm sure the quality of the card, too, has a part to play in this. Like, if you have Savage Feast, for example. Yeah. Uh, it could be a lot more of an upswing because yeah. now you have a draw discard effect. You have an Intimidate. You have an extra card you can play with. So, yeah, I think that might influence the decision, too. Um, also, uh, yeah, I guess the, the last thing is, like, using Agile Windup. Uh, you don't, like, I see a lot of people use Agile Windup on their opponent's end step. Um, you don't really want to do that in this deck. You always want to use Agile Windup when you are taking advantage of both the Mandible Claw Go Again mm -hmm. and the Agility Token next turn. Sure. Right. So, it, it, like, it takes some amount of discipline to, like, use it effectively. Right. Yeah. I think... <laughs> Last point is, like, this deck is not KO, even though they're both brutes. A lot of time in KO... You do want Agile wind up on their turn because you can easily convert to two yeah. costs and just Arsenal or whatever. But on your turn, it's so much better for Reinar because you get not only to intimidate the claw, but you also just get to do like it, it's different uh, different value assertions essentially. I feel with wind up in those two decks, so I feel yeah. like people coming from one or the other should recognize the strengths and weaknesses on uh, of wind up, even though it's a great card in both decks. Definitely um, um, a great way to think about it is that uh, whenever Mandible Claw has go again, it is very efficient. It's like technically above rate. Mm. Uh, so we are using Agile Windup to get two above rate effects, which is swinging both of our Mandible Claws. Yep. And then ideally, if you can spend your action point afterwards, then mm. that is like the optimal way to use Agile Windup. Nice. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Um, that was, yeah, that was a nice kind of deep dive into into yeah. reiner and kind of current state of reiner clay I appreciate Revisiting you coming him. on you know i'd seen bleak after ko took the spotlight but it's nice to see a reiner deck come up i'm gonna play this deck <laughs> so, i know you're gonna play this deck yeah. um but ha happy to see kind of like it, it's funny with brute it's just like everyone just like memes it's just like brute is like the antithesis and now it's like brute all blue players like are we yeah. the meta now like it, it's really it's mm -hmm. actually kind of a. It's interesting to the point where, like, I feel like there's so much support at this point for all the older kind of classes that uh, the deck's just looking not that many weaknesses. It's looking like a lot more of a enjoyable play experience, whereas I think before a lot of the Brutes just had just massive kind of issues here or there that were very, very hard to get around. And I think Heavy Hitters specifically has solved a lot of those. Not all of those. Uh, you don't have to run those, bad though. cards anymore. Right, yeah, it's it's, it's quite yeah, it's 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 a big deal. I mean, that's yeah. it's just like the warrior blue problem. You know, it's just like yeah. these cards suck. Why would I play this deck kind of thing? Uh, but it's nice to see like heavy success, like heavy hitters, definitely bringing um a more rounded, giving some options back to the classes that've been here a long time. Yeah. So quite quite nice. We'll see kind of what comes up in the uh, KO deck. Uh, we only have two spoilers for now, but. Uh, might be might be some more interesting stuff for Reiner and Kale in the middle of Viya too. Mm -hmm. I don't really care, but yeah, maybe <laughs> Viya too. But um, other than that, Clay, any any last kind of uh, last kind of words, of shout outs or, or or anything anything you wanna wanna say to your to your fans? I know you've got. Fans. I, I want to shout out to this guy Eric Lear. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. I did not believe in myself, and I thought I should play Kale instead of Reiner, and he told me to play Reiner. Nice. It wasn't just me. I'm sure it was, it was also Lucas. it was also Lucas. Okay. Okay. 
It's it's true, but you gotta you gotta believe you're yeah, you're a specialist. Play your talker. deck. Yeah. You just you just I just being the specialist, you play your deck. You can take wins that you didn't think you had. I mean, uh, Clay, Clay just proved it here. But uh, any any other shoutouts? Anybody else who kind of had maybe help help you with the deck or, or practice or whatever? Or uh, actually, with? yeah, Sam Dando uh, chatted to me a lot about this deck and like really oh, helped yeah. me get like the initial skeleton going. So I really appreciate nice. that. Um. Like, I appreciate all my locals. Uh, Play testing into, name. into KO, probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Augustine for like the hammering out the KO matchup or KO matchup. Um, yeah. Yeah. Too many people to think. It's like, yeah. You just it, you know who process. you are. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly. who you are. Just say yeah. it, say it that way. <laughs> all right. Well, for all, all the viewers here, if you like this kind of content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember you're watching it in the world. Have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now.